Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a request tutorial for you this afternoon. Um, I got a message on the Facebook wall from Susan Carlson, I was, I believe it was. She wanted to see how I colored the butterfly on this card that I made back in uh, Massachusetts when I was down there for the Heirloom Stamp Show. So I thought, oh, what the heck, that won't take too long. I'm happy to oblige. Um, and so what we're going to do first is take a piece of cardstock. I've got some Nina. Uh, 80 pounds, solar white, classic crest. That's a mouthful, but it's really great cardstock. I buy it by the rain because um, I find it works better than pretty much anything else for um, for coloring. And I'm using one of the new butterflies I got, the Stampendous one, Stampendous. And um, I was really, I was really glad I got this because it came with little stencils in there, little masks. So hopefully I haven't misplaced it because I was just using it, um, but they're clear. So they tend to get misplaced by me on my table all the time. And this is, see, this is the part that you pop it out of. And where is the mask? Um, I'm going to pause it and find the mask. How about that? I found it. If it was a bear, it would have bit me. It was right there under that stamp. And I just realized I used archival link instead of mementos to stamp this. So we'll find out whether that runs or not with our markers. Oh, the fun experiments we will have today. All right. So now I'm going to put my stencil down. Like that, I'm actually going to write, that does seem to line up, so I'm going to write up on the stencil so that hopefully I will see it a little bit better and know what direction I'm using it from. And I've got this little honeycomb stencil that came from a, a Close to My Heart set I got at the show. I don't have a Close to My Heart demonstrator, so that worked out pretty well. I'm just going to throw a few little honeycombs in there I'm using Memento Grey. It really doesn't matter what you use for that because we're in the background. And I'm just going to put a few random ones in there. I know this isn't part of the coloring, but I did want to show you those cool masks because I think it would be awesome if all stamp companies started doing that. And if I ruled the world, that's what they would do. If I ruled the stamp company world, they would put masks with all their stencils and not charge any extra for them. That would be part of it too because they didn't. This wasn't any more expensive than the regular sets. Um, and not all the sets come like that from them. And I've seen this set without this, the, the template before. All right, so now what I'm going to do is actually set that back down and use a little color duster. These little look like shaving brushes. And I'm just going to give the background a little bit of color. And actually, the cool thing is, and uh, it was actually Judy from Judykins who manufactures these color dusters last year, showed me you go right over a stencil that you've, you've stamped over and you can actually spread that ink around so that, for one, you hardly have to clean your stencil, and for two, you don't waste that ink that was there. So I really, really like that. I love uh, ideas that, that make you uh, stretch your supplies a little bit further and less waste and less work. All right, so there we have our butterfly against our background, and I want to stamp um, happy birthday on there just because I seem to sell it on my birthday cards at craft fairs, so I always, and I always need extra birthday cards at home, so I figured I'm going to do that. Now here, here's the test here. Let's hope that the ink doesn't run. Um, I am going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the coloring or the ink smearing, whichever uh, happens to B. And I'm starting in with my darkest color. It's BT9. These are the Spectrum Noir pens. Oh, yay! We don't seem to be... Our ink isn't bleeding. Well, that's good. I didn't know. I haven't used the archival as under uh, markers before. And I'm just adding this really dark blue. And you could do whatever color that you want. You could do oranges to yellow. You could do um, reds to pinks. You could do whatever you want for your blend. It's going to be the same way. Now, I know a lot of people like to start with their lights and work out, but I find that that takes a lot longer and I don't get as good of a blend. And these colors are a little difficult to blend, these dark kind of turquoisey colors, but you know, it's it's not bad. I think you'll find that it blends, it blends pretty well. All right, go down to the um, BT7. These, uh, I do find that these caps are difficult to, um, to remove. So that's something to consider if you have strength issues when you're choosing what markers you want. The caps are kind of tough. I know they have to snap on there well so that you don't, they don't dry out, but uh, I think they're a little bit tougher to remove than some other brands that I've tried. But I do also find that I like the nibs on these, the bullet nib, better than I do on the original Spectrum Noirs because I did get a bunch of those. I thought I was going to be getting the new style when I ordered them and they sent me the old ones, but 
what are you gonna do? It was a good deal, so I'm a little bummed, but I still, I'm a little bummed because holy moly, those are hard to come off. Um, I am a little bummed because I was looking forward to, to trying the new ones, but I was able to find these at the Gary Berlin booth at the stamp show. And someone told me that AC Moore now has the, uh, the new version. The new version are circles on the end, not squares. That's how you could tell. I'll grab an old one just to show you. Here, oh, it's even the same color. Look at that. So that's the old one. They're squarish and the new ones are circulish. They're not, these are actually like octagons or something. They're not going to roll off your table, but the ends are circles. So don't buy the square ones. If you see them in the squ store, buy the circle ones. Unless you get a really crazy deal that you can't pass up, then, you know, buy yourself a bottle of denatured alcohol too, so you can, uh, so you can juice them back up if you need to. There, you got to make sure you put these caps on. Holy moly, they are tough. That one I didn't have on very well because I just used it. Um, so, you know, just my observation. I've got one package of this, these uh, markers, these new style markers, and that's it. So, yeah, I'm just going by, by what I'm observing from that first package. And I'm just overlapping my previous colors to help them blend. Paper is important. Um, my daughter, actually, I'll show you this. My daughter made colored this for me. Number one mom! Um, and she used the Recollections card stock from Michael's, a new Recollections card stock. I have not blended on that yet, but I think she did a fantastic job. And, you know, she's nine and she got a blend like that on that card stock. So I'll be looking forward to trying that. It might replace my Nina. It's certainly, it's really, really heavy weight. It reminds me of the Gina K a little bit, except for the fact that it's not quite as smooth and it does bleed through. The Gina K Pure Luxury does not bleed through. Uh, let's see, let's go to BT2, and I think that's going to be my lightest one, and I swear I almost knocked the tripod off my table trying to get that cap off. My oh my. Now, that one does seem to be wanting to bleed my ink because I use the archival and not the memento, so I'm going to be careful where I put it that I don't go over any really big spots of black ink. Not a big deal, but I'm really glad that's not like big raccoon eyes on my paper. Because I thought that might happen. Of course, it didn't bother me enough to uh, <laughs> to restamp it and uh, do the video again. All right, so there. That's how. So that looks pretty cool just by itself. There's just markers, and then I did want to go over it um, because I, I wanted just I wanted to play. Basically, I was just gapping with the girls and not really going to be that productive. So all I had in my bag were these cheapo pencils, and um, they were all right. You know, these are the Col Koi Noir K O H I N O R pencils and they're they are a steal of a deal i think you get like 24 or 48 i think i don't know i think it's like 14 bucks or 24 that's what i'm thinking like any of the um i don't know if they have them in like the big box craft stores i think i got this at um we used to have this great little local art art supply store called um uh, penobscot paint and i used to go there all the time and I was always like they had this aisle where they always had the kind of the promotions and that would be like when companies had a new product and they wanted to promote it um so there'd be some really awesome deals there and I think I got this set for like ten dollars or something it was 24 maybe it was 40 I'm really thinking it was 24 but what I really liked about it was that it's all colored pencil it's all color with a coating of varnish on the outside um so you're not like paying for wood you're paying for color and it was a cheap price for that color. That's how I tried out my Yarka paints. Um, I think that's even how I got my M. Graham watercolor. So if a new company would come along, their salespeople would promote it and put it in the stores and um, get some really awesome deals that way. And these are um, these are a little harder than your Prismacolors. They're not as soft and creamy, but they're not bad. Koe Noor. Koe Noor? Hmm. Not sure on the pronunciation, but... I'm pretty sure it's K-O-H-I-N-O-R, and they're not expensive, and I have seen them online. I think Oriental Trading has them. So you can check there first. Don't forget to tell them Lindsay sent you. All right. I kind of like that. Let me put a little highlight on the body there and get a little more color in there. Just to, I think colored pencils, you can mold a little bit, model your, um, your picture, so it just kind of stands out a little bit more. Colored pencils are a little bit more opaque. You can kind of see how it covered over some of the spots there. Now I could go in, like if I took a clear blender, or even one of these markers, that's a, not a really waxy colored pencil, so I'm, I'm gonna risk a uh, risk going in there. So I can go over that and it will kind of dissolve and make the pencil transparent and go back to the black and just kind of give a little tint of the, of the color over it. 
So I wouldn't, you know, do this with my most expensive markers, but um, what the heck, I'll give them a try with these just to crispen up any haziness. And then after it's set, make sure your marker's all dry. You can actually buff over it with a, uh, a tissue and it will bring back like some more lum luminous color. And this is bigger, obviously, than the panel that I use for my card, but I'm not thinking that I need to trim it down, so I think I might just ink up the edges. I really don't know what I'm going to use this for, other than, I don't know, I could put it on the birthday card, I guess, since I typed happy birthday, I don't know, but I just wanted to do that for an example to show you how I use the new Spectrum Noir, the new style markers. I think they're fantastic, I think they're a good buy, because I see them go on sale for like seven or eight bucks at the craft stores, regular price is $12 for six markers, that's really not bad. Um, the only thing is the caps are kind of hard to put on and take off, so if you have issues like that, these might not be the best choice for you. I like how they don't roll, they are comfortable to hold. Um, so, you know, just keep that stuff in mind when you are shopping for your macas, but they work great with other brands of markers too, so if you have some Prismas and some Pro Markers and some Copics and some Trias and some this and some that, they all work well together. Chart Pack is its own thing, if you have Chart, pa chart Pack markers, they're not really going to work with those. Um, but Charpak is their own xylene based thing. Uh, so there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and share it and tell your friends and everything. And um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.